come to a time of prayer. Uh, I've already prayed regarding some of the ministry that, that opportunity, um, but uh, there's a lot of needs that are out there. Uh, again, just a uh, reminder, you know, we need to continue to pray for uh, those in leadership positions that they, uh, uh, again, I, I'm glad I'm not in that position to have to make some of the decisions uh, that, uh, that are going on regarding COVID, regarding uh, also just the unrest So again, let's uh, let's remember them. Let's remember those who are on the front lines of, of both of these situations. I think about our, our medical workers, uh, just uh, just praying safety over them. And uh, I had a situation uh, yesterday, um, and, and again regarding you know just some of the, the racial tension, and, and we just we we need Jesus in the midst of that. Uh, but there has been a group of people who have been lumped together and being called a problem. And it is so untrue. Um, our the people who serve the police and sheriff department, um, by far the large majority uh, are great men and women who are there to serve us. And I had a privilege yesterday where I, I ran into a deputy um, at the garbage dump. You run everybody in at the garbage dump. <laughs> I um, and, and I just said, I want to thank you. And he says, I'm not forgetting a lot of that. Um, you know, lately he's been getting the opposite. But you know, I, I wanted him to know, you know, I know the majority are doing things right in the right way. And, and you're getting a lot of that. And I, I just want to say, I just want to shake your hand. I know that was wrong, <laughs> the COVID situation. But just to say, you know, we need to support those. Because can you imagine the job that, that are being, that's, that's in that situation as well? Um, and so, again, just that whole situation. Uh, keep everybody involved in prayer. Uh, now closer back home, just some, some needs that, that I have been made uh, aware of. And, and uh, I don't have a list with me, and I am horrible about forgetting when I'm, I'm here. Uh, but uh, Vicky's sister, uh, Tamara. Uh, she's been on our prayer list for a long time with cancer. Um, the doctors have come to the point of saying um, there's nothing else we can do. And she has gone home to be with one of her daughters uh, and then just to, to wait. And so let's keep um, that family in, in prayer. And uh, again, I know there's other, other needs. And let me just turn to the family here. Um, other needs that you're aware that we can be praying for this morning. Yes, thank you. That, you know, I knew there was one other person, yeah. uh, Karen, uh, we mentioned was having surgery, did have back surgery, um, and just pray for uh, her recovery. Thank you. Kendra, um, Kendra also, uh, Libby and Brian's daughter, uh, had a gallbladder surgery. Um, and so uh, pray for her. She's recovering from that. New baby. And there's a new baby, too. And there's a new baby.
God, we, we continue to pray for our nation. And, and Father, for, for just the unrest um, that is there. Uh, God, with the COVID-19 situation, we again continue to pray for leaders. Uh, God, with, with uh, just uh, the, the, the racial tension and unrest, um, and, and Father, where injustices have been done. Uh, but God, how, how we can handle this together instead of apart. And so God, give, give us as a church Give, give those who are, are out there. God, we pray for those on uh, in sheriff departments and, and uh, police departments that God, you would you would help them uh, because they're getting the brunt of what a couple did wrong. And so we pray for them and their safety. So Father, we, we thank you. We thank you that we can turn to you in all these things because as we're about to see Praise the Lord. If you would like to stand and sing with us, you're a good, good father. Or a good, good father. Let's sing. Word of the Lord.
Are we working? Testing. All right, it's working, both both here and, and there. So uh, if you'd like to take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. As you're going there, um, you know, Father's Day uh, for me, as well as probably many in this room, uh, is a bittersweet day. Um, you remember your father, but your father is no longer with you. Um, this is my second Father's Day uh, with my dad in heaven. Um, and, um, you know, just thinking about this day coming up, it, it's been, um, you know, just, just thinking. Thinking about him and thinking about um, talking with him. Um, and, you know, you think back at the way you talked to your father <laughs> when you were little. It was, can I have a piece of candy? Um, can I have that toy? Um, can I go one more time? Um, can, can I get a football? Can I, can I, um... Can I have the car keys? <laughs> it was a lot of handout, right? <laughs> um, and then talking to my dad as an adult son to an adult. The conversations changed. Dad, what would you do? in this situation? Or, um, God, t d Dad, tell me, tell me, tell me about that story again when you used to jump off moving trains. <laughs> you know, the, the reason I never had that, sto that, that story, you know, to talk about when my dad was younger, because he didn't tell me when I was younger. <laughs> As a boy, he used to live right next to a train station, and they, he and his friends would hop on, slowly moving, and jump off when he, oh yeah, anyway, anyway, um, and so uh, we're going to skip this part when Josh hears the message um, later, so granddaddy did that, okay, so, so you know, all, all sorts of things, being able to share some goals and aspirations, as well as struggles, you know, with my dad and gaining wisdom, isn't it amazing how smart our fathers grew as as we grew, as, as now I, I'm holding my daughter, I'm holding my son, and, and, and realizing how difficult, and being able to have those, those adult conversations, and, and, and just, you know, seeing and hearing his story, and finding out about just the, some of the, the things that God did in his life, at certain places in his life, making him the man he was to be, and putting him in the situations, and just, just, I, I, I'm, I miss that. And then my dad having dementia. Every time um, I would see him again, um, there'd be a little less there. Um, I, and I know there are some that are out there that have had it worse than I did. He still always knew I was his son. <laughs> um, now, I, it'd be funny, I would, I would call him and talk to him on the phone, and I'd hear my stepmom in the background saying, Randy, Randy, it's Randy, <laughs> you know, just so he would say the name, and I appreciate, Bev, you doing that for me, uh, and, and stuff, but, but I, I just, just knowing that, but, but there were so many things where he couldn't get the story and, and stuff like that, and still having conversations, sometimes it was the same conversation over and over again, maybe every 15 minutes. Um, I do remember one time, um, about a year, maybe, maybe more before he, he, he died, um, I brought out an old yearbook. He was a high school principal. 
And, and, and I brought this yearbook of, of a principal. He was principal that started a school and, you know, and got all the staff and all that. And, and, and he and I, I started pointing out, do you re-? And, and at first he didn't remember, but then just that realization in that moment, him seeing and going, oh, I forgot so and so. Oh, and it was just kind of this neat little moment that he and I had, a fleeting moment. But oh, the opportunity to talk with your father, the wisdom, the advice, and yes, sometimes the conversation ending with this, how much do you need, son? (laughs) And sometimes talking just to be with him. This is how Jesus described our relationship with God. He's a father. He is actually the father. We who are fathers in this room are poor reflections. (laughs) of our awesome Heavenly Father. In fact, sometimes people struggle with the image of Father because the earthly Father had issues. Realize our Heavenly Father doesn't have issues. He is perfect and always knows what to say, when to listen, when to act, and when not to act. And so I'd like to look at a passage today It's very, very, very familiar In Matthew chapter 6, I'm going to put the words up there, especially for those at home that don't have their own Bibles, and and if you don't have uh, as well. Um, But Matthew chapter 6, Jesus teaches, and this is during the Sermon on the Mount, um, teaches about prayer. But just sometimes we get into this weird whatever when we say, now we will pray. You know, now pray is, I'm talking to God. And Jesus says, when you talk to God, it's, you're talking to your Father. And it's not to have all this religiousness. Yes, there's an aspect of respect, just like you would speak to your Father with respect. But there's intimacy to there. But we'll get to that. And let me just, just go over these first passages real quickly, um, uh, leading up to what I probably don't even need to put up there on the screen because you know the words. Um, but he says this, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they've received their reward in full. And Jesus is like, listen, when you're talking to God, talk to God. It's about that. It's not about, look at me, I'm talking to God. It's If people see you or not, is not the issue. And you're missing the point. If you're doing it to be seen, you'll get it. You'll get your what you're after. You'll get people seeing you. But are you really talking to God if your mind is on what people are thinking? No. And so you've received what you're get wanting. You're wanting some people praising you, but you're missing connecting with the Father. He continues on. But when you pray, go into your room. And that's the inner room. Some translations say the closet. Um, and, and so, but it's just going where you know no one can see you, so you don't even have that temptation um, uh, of doing it to be seen. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Now, it's not saying you must, that's the only place you can pray, but it's just saying so you're not doing it to be seen. Then, then go where you're not seen. And then he says this, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. And that's a great comfort. Like when we pray and stuff like that, I'm always going to forget something. But, but God knows. I'm not informing Him. He fills in the blanks. Um, but, but it says don't, and this is so sad, 
Don't pray over and over and over and over and over again the same thing. Um, I come from a, a, a background in church that was more, and I'll, I'll just say more liturgical. Um, and in every service, we said the Lord's Prayer. Now, in one good way, I, I really know it. <laughs> you know? But I remember as a child, our Father, we are in heaven, how to be in the kingdom of God. That's what it meant to me because of the vain repetitions. Um, there's all sorts of other prayers that are like that. Oh, if you say this so many times, or if you do this, and God's just saying, no, 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 you, you're talking with me. That's not the point of the next few verses that say, here's, here's the model prayer. Um, uh, it's not so that you just repeat it for rote, but that it's a good guide as you talk to your Father in heaven. It says, this, in, this then is how you'll pray. And the message goes from this, the, the rest of these words. Um, and, and so let me just read them all as a whole, and, and then we're going to look at them a couple words at a time. Um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive, have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And then some translations add this little part. It's not what Jesus said, but some people add, you know, for thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. All that's true. That's biblically true, but wasn't in the original. Um, but I'd like to just look at this passage and together just talk about talking to the Father because he wants us to. God Almighty says, Come to me as your dad. So before we look, let's pray. And Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you spelled it out. You gave us a guideline um, so that, you know, if we don't know what to say, here's a good starting point. So God help us as we look at these few words and how they can be a guide when we talk to you our father i pray in your name jesus amen amen um i'm going to begin and i'm going to you know we that that was the uh, new american standard uh, not new that was uh, niv new international version of the bible um i'm going to do it what we're familiar with um, as whether you, you've heard the song, you know, or whatever, or, you know, you've just all your life, you know, gone, gone from the King James. And so just, 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 I'm going to use that since it's more familiar. Um, and, and it begins with our father. Two things about that. It doesn't say my father. It says our father. Now this is to his disciples he was teaching. This is to those who are believers. And, and if you are not a believer, oh, the invitation is up for you to be able to call God your father, but you have to go through God the son in order to get there. But it's a we thing. It's a family thing that we can come to the Father. Yes, you can come to him individually. Yes, please do that and all that. But realize when you're praying, it's not just about you. In fact, it's really all about God. So it's our Father. <laughs> we read this just a couple weeks ago. Romans 8, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave to, again to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship that we cry, Abba, 
Father. And that Abba it, it is a, an endearing, intimate term. Almost, not quite, but almost like us going to God and saying, Daddy. It's an intimacy. I, I like to say, you know, especially when it's hard and life is real difficult, I like to say, just go up and crawl into Daddy's lap and tell him all about it. And he's given us a spirit that, that lets us know we're in the family. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And what a privilege that we always have accessibility because he's our father. His door is always open for us. Our father. Which art or who art or who is in heaven. Um, Jesus said, um, in Matthew chapter 5, I tell you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, and then he says what heaven is, for it is God's throne. And the earth, I love this, his earth is just his footstool. I mean, it's just so small compared to God and, and stuff like that. But, but when he says, which is in heaven, God, our Father who is in heaven, meaning he's on his throne, meaning, God, I'm all crazy here with all the stuff going on in my life and I'm not sure what the decision is or what the action should be or how I'm going to get supplied and all that, but you are in heaven. You are in your th on your throne. You are in control. And so my life's out of control and I'm going to the one who's in control. My Father who is in heaven. You're never wondering, Father, like, like I did when I became a dad and the doctor handed Sarah to me and then another doctor later, three and a half years later, handed Josh to me. I might be like the only dad who did this. Guys, tell me if, if, if it was you. You know what was going in my head? Now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> Got the baby. Yeah. Now what? And, and I, I like to say my parenting has been, I've been making it up going, every day as I'm going along, you know, just, just and some of that. But, but, but God is never going, now what? He knows exactly what. And so when we come to our Father, He is on His throne. He is in heaven. He's in control. And in our crazy life, isn't that good to know? Hallowed, or hallowed be your name. It just simply means your name be hallowed. Your name be revered. You be glorified, God, in the way that I'm about to pray. And this is kind of like, this is actually the end of the prayer. Everything else is, and here's how you're going to be hallowed. Here's how, you know, all the things I'm going to pray is all about God let people go, wow, what a great God you have. God, this is how I'm praying so that, you know, remember, remember, okay, maybe not, I don't know, but, but images of kids, maybe it's on TV, maybe, I, I mean, I remember times like this, you know, when I was growing up, if I can remember that far back. Well, my dad is a so-and-so. Oh, yeah. Well, my dad is a, uh, you know, whatever, you know, or, or, or my dad, he has a such and such car, or my dad, well, he has a this and this, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, that young kids and stuff like that, and going, I want to brag on my dad. Hallowed be your name. Over and over in Jesus' ministry, what he says he's doing he says, I do it for this reason, that my Father would be glorified, that the light would shine on my 
Father. Let me just look at a couple passages. In John chapter 17, um, after Jesus said this, and this is him talking to his disciples about, um, you know, him going to the cross the next day. He looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son. Why? So that your Son may glorify you. You know, when we're praying and God meet needs in my life, it's not just about you, it's so, so that you would receive the glory. God, as we're praying for the people that are sick, God, do it in a way that you are hallowed. You get the glory. For you granted him, the Son, authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those who, you, who have given him. All those you have given him. Now this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Listen, listen, for those who are either watching on, 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 at home or, or hearing it right now, listen, eternal life is not just about living forever because listen, everyone lives forever somewhere. Um, but it's the relationship that begins now. That they may know God and Jesus. And then he says this. For I have brought you glory on earth. How? How, how can I live out my prayer? Be hallowed, God. By completing the work you've given me to do. You know, so when we're praying, hallowed be thy name. We're saying, God, help me do your will. So, so I have a life that is pointing others to you. And sometimes it means going through bad things. Look at Jesus' example. Earlier he says, now my heart is troubled. And, and the troubledness is he realizes he's going to the cross. Now my heart is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. He's talking about, God, do I ask that you spare me from the cross? No. Going to the cross so you will be glorified, Father. Now, if you think that's only for Jesus, look what Jesus says to Peter. Jesus said this, and he talked about Peter. Peter, one day you're going to go where you don't want to go. And it says this is indicating the death. But Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Peter, one day you're going to go where you don't want to go. And, you know, tradition says that Peter ended up being crucified upside down. And, and, by Peter living his life for God and being persecuted and ultimately dying for his faith, glorified God. And then he said, follow me. Hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come. All throughout Jesus' ministry, he, he started his ministry by saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Get ready. You know, he, he told others, hey, the kingdom, the kingdom is right here in your midst. You know, in a way he was pointing to himself, but he was also saying, look at what's happening among you. The kingdom is in your midst. And then later on we think about one day the kingdom will come, that Jesus will come, and, and he'll make all things right and it'll all be new, and, and yet it'll be rough before then. But in the end, it's all going to be his kingdom. Your kingdom come. What is the kingdom? The kingdom is where God rules. And so when you're praying, God, your kingdom come, you're saying, God, I want your will, which is the next phrase, to be done in me, in my church, in my community, in this nation. Ultimately, Jesus, I want you to come back. Come, Lord Jesus. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, how is it in heaven? How much of God's will 
happens in heaven. Every bit of it. Speaking of just to his angels in... in, in um, um, actually, no, let me, let me go to that. It's the next verse. Matthew 26. Going a little fa farther, he, pr he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken. What's the cup he's talking about? His crucifixion. If there's another way, let it be, but not as I will, but yours be done. God, God, would you spare my child this difficulty? But God, not my will. Yours be done. God, if you would take away this sickness. But God, not my will. But yours be done. Here's the other passage. Psalm. You want to talk about how it's in heaven? Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. So you got angels all around God and they do whatever God says all the time. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you whose servants who do his will. If you want to know what it's like in heaven, everyone around God is going, yes, yes, yes. Never, I don't, I don't feel like, no, they, they say yes, Yes, God, we will do what you say. And so Jesus says, oh, that your will would be done on earth like it is in heaven. And that begins in our individual lives. God, what is your will for me? Give me the strength to do it. So when you're saying your will to be done, God... Give me, because again, if we, we've been looking at Romans, it's not our power to do it. God, give me the strength to do what you want. Give us this day enough bread to last me a lifetime. Is that what it said? Isn't that what we want? Isn't that how we act? Well, I got, I got, I, I don't know what, I don't know what's going to happen a month from now. I don't know what's going to happen a year from now. I don't know what's going to happen if my retirement or da, 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 da. God, give me the needs for today. Just today. I, I like what one psalmist said. Um, actually, it's a proverb. <laughs> Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. And then he says, but give me only my daily bread. Why would someone say to the God who owns all things, <laughs> just for today, because of this? Otherwise, I may, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Isn't that what happens? When everything starts going your way, everything seems to go, we start just going, falling into sin and falling into doing things that we're not supposed to be doing and we deny the Lord or I might become poor and steal, so dishonor the name of God. And so this, this proverb, this wise person is saying, I'm just going to ask, God, give me what I need today. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you don't think about the future, you don't plan for the future, you know, you got to make decisions today based on, but... but God, if you need me to know today, I, I ask that I know today or the provision for today. Give us this day our daily bread. Keep me in daily dependence on you. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is a hard prayer. It's the only thing that's a conditional. How are you towards those who wrong you? Who say something bad about you, who hurt your feelings, who, who intentionally or unintentionally 
but you don't know what that, you don't know what that. Forgive me as much as I forgive them. That's what you're praying. And so part of the Lord's prayer is going, God, who have I not forgiven? God, who am I angry with? God, who do I need to get right with? And, and here's the thing, you know, it, 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 it's, it's God wants to forgive us, but we're not receiving his grace when we're not willing to give his grace. If you realize how much he has forgiven you, you will not, you can't help but forgive others. There's a story that Jesus tells of a man who was forgiven this huge, great debt. There was no way whatsoever this man could pay the debt. And, and, and so he comes and he pleads at his master's feet, oh, forgive, I, I'll pay you back, I'll pay you back somehow, I'll get in it. And the master forgives him. He doesn't just say, you can pay me more later, you can pay me in installments. He says, your debt is forgiven. What does the man do? He goes to a guy who owes him. It's still a good amount, but it's not an impossible amount. And he says, pay me now, pay me now. And the guy says, no, no. He says the exact same words. Oh, no, I'll pay you back. I'll do it. Please, this is it. And he throws him into prison where he'll never be able to pay him back. And Jesus ends this parable with these words. The master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. And then Jesus gives the moral of the story. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers from your heart. Forgive my debts. And they are many. As I forgive the debts towards me. Help me, God, to forgive. And lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. God's word says that there's no temptation that sees you except which is common to man, which means some of us feel I'm the only one with this struggle. No, it's a common struggle. That's one of Satan's lies to make you think you're all by yourself. But, but God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you're tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand under it. Listen, God, I need your help in temptation. God, I need to see the way out. God, help me. Now, listen. Listen, this is not, again, the Lord's Prayer is not something that you just say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be in heaven. It's something that you pray through. And as you're praying through this, get specific. God, I'm tempted with. Fill in the blank. God, I'm struggling with. Help me. Lead me not into temptation. And this goes with it, but deliver us from evil. Over again, other passages, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. God is there ready to protect. But listen, we need to submit ourselves to the Lord. And let him be the one to fight the battle. Deliver me from evil. And then as I said, this is an add-on. I like the add-on. Why, why am I praying all this? Because it's all about you. 
This goes back to hallowed be thy name. Why am I praying about my daily bread? Why am I praying that about, about handling you know, the, those who sin against me and, and asking for forgiveness? How, how, about my daily bread? All that. Because it's all about you, God. For yours is the kingdom. For yours is the power. For yours is the glory forever and ever. And then the song adds, Amen. Amen. I'd like to challenge you this week. I, I, I don't raise your hand, but I, I would just say probably the majority in this room could quote the Lord's Prayer. This is sometimes something that I, I do. A lot of times I'll go out, um, maybe I'll go in the woods or I'll go for a walk and just me and God, and I begin phrase by phrase. And I just walk or I'm sitting down in the woods or whatever and just say, Father, and I dwell on that wonderful truth and that relationship he has given me. And I go phrase by phrase and let him lead me to fill in Oh, you're in heaven. You're in charge. You're in control. Thank you, thank you, because I feel like I'm out of control. Kind of like just praying it out that way and just taking each of the phrases and saying, God, Father, here's my needs. God, I'm a little worried about my daily bread right now. I'm bringing my needs. Bring them to him specifically. God, I'm, I'm struggling about forgiving so-and-so. And I know that you said I need to ask for, I need to forgive so that I can be forgiven. And so God, help me in that. And just walking through a very intimate, not a repetitive, an intimate conversation. Listen, I've done this. And, and sometimes, sometimes it's five minutes. <laughs> sometimes it's, it's over a half an hour of prayer as God leads me in just a conversation with him. And so, it's a conversation with Father. And God's word says, for those who've believed, he has given the right to be called the children of God. There is a this is not God is the universal father of all people. He is the father of all believers in Christ. And if you are not a believer, what an opportunity, what a relationship that I want. I want the one who's on the throne to be my dad. And so God sent his son to die for us, to rise for us so that we could be his and in relationship with him if we put our faith and trust on him. So let me ask your heads to be bowed and eyes closed. Is that you? You may have religiousness. You may have, you know, you go to church all the time or you, you know, whatever, you read your Bible every day, but do you know Jesus? Have you given your life to him? And if you have, God says, call me Father and come to me as my daughter, as my son. And so, Father, I pray. I pray for we who've known you and maybe our relationship has gone stale. God, I, I pray this week sometime, it could even be later today, for someone to just pause and stop and, and have their Bible open to, to Matthew 6 and just pray through using this as their guide as we talk to you, our Heavenly Father. I pray in your name. Amen. Amen. As always, I like to invite if you would like to talk to me in an area that you, you would maybe coming to know Christ or maybe just an area of struggle. Um, I'm going to be up here at the front um, to be able to talk to you. So 
just uh, want you to know that. And if you're at home, you know, you probably know the church's phone number, but um, if not, look it up online. It's there. Um, and I'd be glad to talk with you as, as well. I'd like us to close today in prayer. And, and again, this is not just so that we repeat it. We don't do this every week. But just to pray this together. And then on your own, pray it with detail. Let's stand. And let's pray this together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day.